So it's faith over fear. This is our topic tonight. Faith over fear. And I think it's very timely, no? Yes. It's a timely uh, message for us tonight. Can you guys see me? I feel like I'm in the dark. You can see me. Yes. Yes. We can see you. Too. You can see my face. Okay. <laughs> With a lot of makeup. And my tagline here is how a believer should respond in this season. Right? But the question here is are we expected to respond differently from the world? Are we? I think we are, right? And, and that's going to be our conversation here tonight. But I was just thinking about faith over fear. I'm just going to look at the word. Let's just look at the word faith real quick and fear, right? So when you talk about faith, and of course you're familiar with uh, Hebrews 11.1, 1, which is where now faith is um, come from. Uh, it's faith is the substance of the things that you are hoping for, right? And it's the evidence of things that are not seen. It's the evidence of things that you do not see that is invisible, but it exists, right? That is the evidence. And, and that's faith. It's something that it's not obvious, but you know it's there, right? And then believing in what God says instead of what the world says. That's also faith. Personally, I think that's, that's very, very timely for us today. That is faith. That's using your faith. And also, um, faith comes from hearing, as, as the Bible said. It's hearing by the Word of God. So we're going to talk about, unfortunately, again, I don't have my PowerPoint, but we are going to be discussing a lot of Bible verses tonight. So bear with me. I will send out the notes, right? So don't uh, bother taking down notes. But I'll send out. Yes. It's like a Zoom. Yes. Faith comes by hearing. So does fear. Yes. I feel like right now that's why so many people are fearful because they are yeah. hearing fear over Yes. Over. <laughs> yes. Just like the Bible study. Oh, para lang zoom ito. Live nga lang, right? So yeah, let's talk about fear. Fear is, the word says fear, F-E-A-R. It's the false evidence appearing real, right? Huh? It's an acronym for fear. But fear is the absence of faith. If you don't have faith, if you feel fear, that means you got to check, am I in faith? Right? Most, li most likely you are not. Now, perfect love casts out fear. That's also in, in, in the Bible. Now, I'm, I have been med meditating on this because understanding the perfect love, which is the, word, the, the love of God, right? Understanding the perfect love will eliminate fear in our lives. Diba? But then do we really understand God's love for us? We're also going to focus on this discussion. It's understanding God's love. And I was thinking about how do you really understand God's love? Panoba. Like, how do you really see God's love? And majority of you guys do not know us months ago, right? Majority of you guys don't know Saldi months ago, right? Mga online lang tayo nag, nag meet, right? But. To those who had some conversations with Saldi before, those who had some moments with him before, right? And to get to know him better, I'm, I'm going to use you as an example. <laughs> to get to know him better, you had some conversations with him. And to know, like, what does he like, right? What does he like? You will know from what he talks about. If you open Saldi's heart right now, what do you see? Sabi ko, baka forex yung sabi You know, that's, that's also possible, right? But if you open his heart, what do you see? Hopefully, ako, no? <laughs> Not forex. Forex. Uh, sell the kids and... <laughs> No, I, I'm using that as an example because. A bad example. <laughs> no, I would I would like to say the right answer is me, right? If you open his heart, you you'll see me. It's now, you. 
Huh? Yeah. For the record, it's Sal and yeah. Alright, okay, that's that's for the record. Now, why did I say that? Now, the thing is, you cannot really know Saldi without knowing me. Like, maririnig at maririnig mo pa rin siya talking about me. Right? And you know what? This is so true about our God. You cannot fully understand God without knowing about who you are without knowing about yourself as well. If you open God's heart right now, you will see you. Right? You will see you. Just thinking about that makes me emote, right? But listen. Because sometimes it's very religious when you uh, start talking about the word and then when you talk about yourself, that is something that's extraordinary, right? It becomes, oh, that's blasphemy. Why are you glorifying yourself? We're not glorifying ourselves, right? But what we are going to do tonight is I want to establish what God says about us. What God says about who we are. And that's in the Word. Now, when you truly understand, when you see yourself in the heart of the Father, then I believe that opens the door to receiving His love for you. Diba? I don't know, because sometimes um, there's fear. When there's fear, because again, you're shaken because you forget about your identity in Christ. Um, so again, we're going to talk about a lot of things. I'm sorry, I don't have my... But if you want to follow with the verses, you can. Um, we're going to... Uh, Go over, okay, let's do this. Should we respond differently? I'm going to go back to that question. Should we respond differently from the world? Of course, even in the Old Testament, guys, you know, um, God had wanted his people to live their lives differently, uh, to talk, to, to act, to speak, uh, to think differently, and to respond differently. And so I think that is expected of us here today as well that we need to respond differently. And uh, let's read, well, you don't have it, but let me read Exodus 19, five to six. Um, now therefore, and this is in King James Version, okay? Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all, for all the earth is mine. Verse six, it says, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, and a holy nation, these are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. I'm just going to highlight these words. It says, you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, and you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Who's doing that? <laughs> Pastor Jeff! <laughs> wow, okay, so... Okay, now, do you see it with me here? No. Sorry. No, no, no. Now, you're probably more familiar with this. First Peter 2, 9, it says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. What I read, Kanina, was in the Old Testament. Now, this is the New Testament, right? A peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So what is this saying here? I'm just going to highlight this word peculiar, right? When you say peculiar, what does it mean? It means different. It means to be envied. It means, it's weird, but it says a special breed. It says a, a different species. Wow, right? In New King James Version, it says his own special people. You are special to the Lord. You are set apart. You carry that seal of peculiarity in your life. It's not peculiar like you're weird. Because that's also peculiar. We had a Bible study. Yeah, yeah. A Bible study one time. We used this for the first time. That and word. For a while, I was like, you are a peculiar. <laughs> right? And it's like the entire week we call each other peculiar. Because peculiar could be like, you're a weirdo. You're yeah. Weird. No, it's just not the same. 
This is the biblical meaning of this word peculiar, right? You are special. You are set apart. And again, it's said in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. So there's definitely something here that we need to understand. You need to understand that whatever is happening outside, whatever is happening in the world, is not permitted in your life. That's what it means. Your case is different because you are set apart. The experiences of the people outside, meaning in the world, that are not from the Lord, are not permitted in your life. It's not permitted to happen to you. And that's the truth. Right? That's what this peculiar means. In Romans 12, 2, it says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove that what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, I'm sure you've heard this over and over and over. It's very familiar uh, Bible verse, right? It says here, do not be conformed to this world. Do not be like this world. Do not be shaped by the world, right? And then it says here, when you do, then you will know and prove what is the good and acceptable, perfect will of God. But another way of saying this is, if you conform to the world, if you act like the world acts, if you think like the world thinks, if you respond like the world responds, then, right, you will fail to see the goodness of God. Then you will not see the purpose and the will and the calling of God for your life. That's another way of looking at this, right? So it's really, again, it's very timely. That's why I'm, I'm highlighting these verses. It's very timely. It's a good reminder for all of us here tonight. That whatever is happening in this world, you're set apart. They're not permitted to happen to you. I don't know if you're getting that. Diba? This COVID-19 whatever is not permitted in your life. Now, that's if, if you believe this and enforces this in your life, then it's going to happen. Can I say something? Yeah. Especially if you're a uh, your family, that man of the household has to inform this and enforce it. Yeah. Because in my household, I just, we don't even know what's really happening out there until we invite people over and they tell us what's happening out there. And we're surprised what's happening out there. Because yeah. my, my stance is that, you know what, all that... Crap. Bad uh, word, but yeah. No, it's not a bad word. But I don't know what else to say. But all that crap stays out there, and in the four corners of our house, this household, we yeah. are we are covered under blood, uh, the blood, blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Our angels are, are protecting us, and it stays out there. And whatever stays here, you know, everything is we're blessed here. Everything's you know exactly as how God wants it. Yeah. And I guess my point here, if you are the man of the household, you you have the authority to enforce that in your household. Not your wife, not your kids who's a Christian and you're not a Christian. It's the man of the household which is the father. Yeah. This is my point a lot of times with my small group. Like, you know how much, uh, you know, it's kind of like how, how God gave Adam, right, the authority that he to me. You know, the, the wife has always been just a helper. <laughs> but you gotta support. But the point is, is that you cannot blame the wife. Because I've made that mistake so many times. In my family, that you know, I just gave it to her, gave it to her, but then one day God showed me that it was me, it was my fault. All this mess was my fault. Yeah. So same with this. When it comes to this, this uh, COVID, you know, everything that's going on out there, if you let it in your house, it's your fault. It's, it's yeah. Head of the house. Yeah, you have, you have the authority. Not your wife. To permit. Or Richard. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, what news are you subscribed to? Is the question. No, really, right? Are you subscribed to the Ten Spice Network? Do you know what I mean, right? Or are you subscribed to the Word of God? Now, let me, let me um, read to you. Actually, Sally will read actually, this to you. Numbers 13, 20 to 33. I don't understand the yeah, that's why. We're going to try to understand. So, Sally will read that. Para maintindihan nyo, right? This is about when the children of Israel were about to enter the promised land. And then Moses sent 12 spies 
to check out the promised land, right? Um, and so let's let's read this. And when you say uh, news, I was looking. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Ten spies. Which one are supposed Numbers thirteen twenty eight to thirty three. Numbers thirteen twenty eight to thirty three, New King James Version. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. Mm -hmm. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak. 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 There. Yeah. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, the Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are, uh, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men who had gone with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land, which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw it in are men of great stature. There we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak, come, came from the giants. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. Amen. <laughs> I just want to highlight this. They said, we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in their sight. It's very interesting. Again, this is the report of those 10 spies, right? There are 12 of them. And then, of course, Caleb and Joshua said, let us go up at once and take possession. So this is really an example of what are you going to believe? Do you see yourself as a grasshopper? Do you, do you, do you go and, and look at your promised land and say, no, it's, it's too much. There's too many giants in the land. If you just imagine how th this, something? yeah. Will you let what happened in market this week <laughs> stop you from going after your promised land? <laughs> KFX people, calm down. <laughs> Seriously. Okay? I mean, yeah. I'm just trying to relate it to life. Right? This is exactly what you're saying. Yeah. But relating it to life, you know, the news, the media, the mainstream media, right? This is, I would say, the 10 Spies Network. It's going to tell you what you can't do. It's going to tell you what you're not supposed to do. It's going to tell you. It's going to just... After listening to it, you, you're filled with fear, right? And listen, you know, the news will tell you what happened yesterday. The news will tell you bad news and things that are not good, right? It's going to instill fear in your heart. Now, the good news, on the other hand, will tell you what's going to happen tomorrow, what's going to happen the next week what's going to happen the next year and the next season. It's not just right? fear, though. So that, which one are... That's with the news thing. Because mm -hmm. sometimes, I don't really, I don't watch the news, but it comes in my news Facebook feed once in a while, and there's a spirit of depression in that. Because yeah. I know oh, what's yeah. there, and I feel so down after mm. reading all that crap. But it's just... Sorry. I'm going to count that word. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's not a bad word. <laughs> it's not a bad word. According to you guys, it's not a bad word. So you gave him permission to use that. <laughs> anyway, okay. Okay, so I hope you guys, I, I think I'm speaking to the choir here. We all, and by the way, I think it goes on the other side as well. Sometimes you think you're listening to something that is that is good, but if that's what you're listening to over and over and over, um, even though you think it's good, it will, you know, I, I feel that too. I feel the heaviness as well. Bottom line, anything that's out of the word of God is not gonna encourage you, at least in this, in this time and age. I don't know. I mean, it's just, Guys, this is just an introduction, but let's just go. Let's go to the meat. We're gonna go to efficiency. And is is this okay? And and I don't know how you wanna do this, but is it okay if I just uh, maybe take my time and really explain each verse, or and maybe we're not gonna finish and continue online, 
or do you want it to finish? And maybe we'll kind of um, skip some. I said, I don't we answered this already. This no, I want to know. I want to know. Yeah. On the way here, she says she has so much information. I have, yeah. It's going to go until past 10. And I said, don't rush it. We'll yeah. cut where we need to cut. And you know what? There's always a power hour. The next do you agree with that? Okay. 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 Right? Because I want to chew on, on these words. I want to chew on, on, on the message and really understand, um, again, how do you eliminate fear in your heart? Focus on God and focus on Jesus, right? And at the same time, when you do that, you'll be surprised. You'll see yourself. So we're going to talk about your identity. We're going to talk about your position and who you are in Christ, right? And hopefully when that is established in your heart, then, you know, we're taken to the next level of revelation. Anyway, so we are going to be reading from Ephesians, Saudi 1, 17 to 23. So line by line, we're going to talk about each one. Again, Ephesians 1, 17 to 23 in the NIV, NIV version. NIV version. Yes, we're going to use NIV. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom, and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms, yeah. far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. You know, for, for those of you who have been listening to me, probably heard me talk about this for so many times. But you know what? I go back to these, I go back to these verses, and I still could not get the full revelation of these verses. So after our discussion, I would really want to encourage you to go into these verses and fully understand, like ask the Holy Spirit for more revelation. Because there's more. Every time I go back, there's more. So um, that's what we're gonna try to, to understand here tonight. So it says here 17. I keep asking that God of our Lord Jesus Christ. So this is the Apostle Paul talking to the Ephesians, right? And he's saying, I'm asking God, God the Father, right? The glorious Father gives you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. The spirit of wisdom. We had this entire series on wisdom. And we know that's the Holy Spirit. We're talking about the Holy Spirit here. And the Apostle Paul is talking to the Ephesians and saying, I pray that you receive it. Now for you guys, is this already done or are you still going to receive the Holy Spirit? I, I hope you guys know that you already have the Holy Spirit inside of you, right? So this is, for them, it's it's like, I wanna, I, I'm praying that you will receive it. For us, we it's a done deal. We have received the Holy Spirit inside of us. Right? We have the wisdom of God inside of us. And we're talking about the wisdom of the Holy Spirit and not the wisdom of the world. So I hope this is established. Now it also talks about the spirit of revelation. So let's talk about revelation real quick. When you talk about revelation, what is revelation? Anyway, I'm understanding you. When you say revelation, my revelation ho kai God, what does that mean? One at a time, guys. Just, just going to <laughs> 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 No. Instruction, that's grace. Oh, so you know, just yell it, you know, because it's, it's quick. It's lang a naman. eureka yeah. moment. An aha. <laughs> An aha moment from the Lord, right? It's from the Lord. It's the revelation. Instruction from the Lord. An aha moment. Huh? No, oh, okay, I'm going to be revelation. Yeah. Yes. But it's a message from the Lord, right? Bottom line, it's a message from the Lord. That's revelation. Now, a few things you need to understand about revelation. Okay. And this is something that you, um, I have 
experiences and I've seen this, right? The first one, the revelation that you receive from the Lord depends on the knowledge that you have of God. It depends on the knowledge that you have of God. Now, therefore, we all receive different revelations. We may receive one Bible verse, but we will receive different revelations from that one Bible verse because we have different experiences, because we have different knowledge of who God is, right? And then the third one is there is such thing as inferior revelation and superior revelation. You can actually see this um, in the Bible from the Old Testament to the New Testament. You can see the revelation of who God is, how it was inferior in the beginning and it just grows and grows and grows, right? So that's what revelation is. Now, allow me to give you an example. Um, and again, it's applied to us as believers, right? Let's just say the revelation of God's healing, okay? Revelation of God's healing. From 1 Peter 2, 24, it says, He who, him, who, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. You guys are familiar with this, right? This is a revelation of your healing. Now, a Christian who believes that he needs to wait on the Lord for his healing will receive this, like this. He'll probably say, I know I will get healed. In God's time, I will receive my healing. That's a revelation, right? A Christian who believes that he needs to pray more or to do more to receive his healing will receive something like this. I know I will get healed. I just need to unceasingly pray and maybe ask my brothers and sisters, as many brothers and sisters as I could, to pray for me so that I can receive my healing, right? Another Christian who believes that God decides to heal sometimes and sometimes not, and he doesn't, and probably God doesn't, depending on circumstances, will receive something like this. If it's your will, Lord, then I will be healed. And another believer will probably um, believe that healings all has been already been given. And he will receive something like this. I know I am already healed. It doesn't matter what my body says, but I'm just waiting for it to manifest in my life. So these are all different revelations. And will I say those, some are wrong and some are right? I don't want to say they are wrong, right? I don't want to say some are wrong. But what I want to suggest maybe is... Are you saying some are inferior and some are superior? Yes, some are inferior and some are superior because you will yield a different result depending on what you believe, right? Depending on the revelation that you have. So the results will be different. Matthew 9.29, it says, it says, according to your faith, let it be to you, right? It will be done to you according to what you believe. Now, another revelation, let me uh, give you, what about protection, for example? Here's, um, I would say, the increasing revelation. So one, uh, as a child of God, you believe that God protects you, okay? Protects you from this virus, okay? That's level one. And if you want to increase that level of revelation, you say, I'm a child of God, I have his protection, and if this COVID virus touches my body, it will die. Right? That's another revelation right there, right? Now, how about you increase that revelation to, I'm a child of God, I have his protection, and I bring his protection, I bring his healing to any place that I go to. And any person that I touch is healed. You go to a shopping, shopping mall, you bring that healing into that place. You bring that protection into that place because you know who you carry. You know when you say it's such a lot of Jesus. Huh? Sino ka Jesus? Oh, sino ah, sino ka. I'm touching your heel, right? That, that thinking, that confidence. Because, but if you really look at it, wait a minute, Jesus mm. is in me. I carry him. Therefore, you know, his, the manifestation of what Jesus does will happen, does happen wherever I go. Yeah. So it's not arrogance, it's belief, it's faith that I really believe it. It's a fact. It's a fact. 
It's understanding. It's a truth. Yeah. Fact. It's a truth. There's a lot of facts, but this is this is the truth. Jesus said, you will do greater things than me. Yeah, Jesus said than me. So he said that. And I'm just saying because when you were talking, you said, yeah, me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but really, yeah. Because this again, I'm not saying any of these revelations are wrong, right? But what I'm saying is, again, you can level up. Your revelation can level up, right? It doesn't have to stop with, I'm protected. You don't have to stop there. I mean, yes. In the body of Christ, you, you, you gave so many examples, but I could see like everybody has varying revelations. And when you start speaking like this, it's like foreign to them. And, and it seems like, why is it like that? If this is what it says in the Bible, and this is the truth, as James mm-hmm. said, then why is it so like unheard of? Don't ask me that question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Don't put me on the spot. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm just I, wait, wait, wait. I think everybody here has heard or has listened to our conversations before. Tamaba. Is there anyone here who's new? If, if someone's here for the first time hearing this and not, hasn't gone through that, yeah. the, like tons and tons of videos that we just, you know, in that in our this we talk about the same thing over again. Authority, identity, it's just packaged differently. It's just different boxes and different packaging, but it goes back to that. Identity, authority. So if this is normal, I guess, uh, talk uh, would sell. But if someone here is like new, just this because do you hear this in church? Honestly? Some. Some. Not much. How come? Let's move on, Rizaldi. <laughs> We're moving on. Thinking, Let's move on. I'm saying things that thinking takes as someone might say, because I'm thinking the same thing. No, there's still different purpose, because we have different purpose. OK. Uh, yeah. Anyway, let's continue. If, again, we are on verse 17, right? It says, I pray that you get the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know God better. Um, In other versions of the Bible, it says to gain a deep and intimate knowledge of God. You know, all of these three things are related. It's gaining, it's activating the the, uh, wisdom of the Holy Spirit inside of you, right? And then the second one is increasing your knowledge of who God is, of his kingdom, and of who you are. So that is the knowledge, right? And then the third one is that revelation having your revelation increase. Like all of these three things are are related. Like you can't have one without the other, right? And so that's why I understand why Paul is like, this is what you guys need, right? This is what you guys need. And the level of revelation that you have now, right, will dictate how you respond to the things around you. Again, there's nothing right or wrong, but one is going to be more effective than the other. And one is going to yield a better result than the other. Right? Um, so again, so let's let's move to the next verse. It says here, verse 18, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. So because you have the wisdom of God, the Holy Spirit, because you have his revelation, because you know God, therefore you will know the following things. The first one that he's talking about is the hope to which he has called you. It's talking about your purpose. It's God's dream for you. It's God's plan for your life. Um, God has a plan. He has dreams calling purpose for you even before you were born. In Ephesians 2.10, it says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Right? He has purpose. He has plan for you. Now, the thing is, if you are so focused on what's going on around you and you're so focused on the things that are wrong, right, you're not going to be able to see God's plan for you. You're not going to be able to focus on his dreams for you. Right? You're going to miss out on this. And you know what, guys? Let me just share this. When you talk about God's plan, and God knows your name, right? And I'm 
thinking about this name, and I, I, I uh, learned from, I don't know, I think there was Ojiripo when he talked about, you have a last name and you have a first name. I'm not talking about your, your name's names right now, right? Your last name, when you talk about, again, about your purpose and your goal, right? Your last name is like everybody's purpose. It's like every believer's purpose. It's the family's purpose. And this is what? Go heal the sick, right? Raise the dead, cleanse the lepers. Go and make disciples of all nations. That's part of our last name. That's everybody's calling. Now at the same time, you have your first name, which makes you very unique in his eyes, right? And that's where you also want to focus on that. You don't stop to the last name. You also want to look at, okay, what is God telling me? What is my purpose specifically, right? Uniquely, what's given to me? And it's really something that, again, the Apostle Paul is saying, when you receive the revelation and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, you will be enlightened to see this as well. And when you see this, you're going to be busy, guys. You're, you won't have the time to worry about what, whatever is happening. But you're not going to have the time to fear because you're so focused on the purpose. Lord, this is your dream, right? You have something to say, Sally. You stand up. <laughs> Good! <laughs> You stood up. That's my cue. <laughs> you want to add something? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> See? I just lost my train of thought. You know? and, Go ahead. Uh, the purpose. Yes, uh -uh. If you're, if, when you are in God's purpose, and you know that you know because it's in your heart, you start doing things that you thought you couldn't do before, and you have more energy. You're ah, more you're more you're excited. Tired. You're excited. You, yes. You, you get five or two, three hours sleep, and you're still okay. Yes. But there's something different. Sino dito yung nandon sa stage na yan? Yung papunta pala. Seriously, it's different versus a job. Like you're not excited. Yeah. You're like you don't want to go. It's different if you love your job, right? Yeah, it's different when you love your job because yeah. probably that season of your life that is your purpose. But when things are changing, maybe God is uh, moving you now to a new season. That's why, you know, I, I never stick with one with a season because I've seen God move me from season to season to season. So I know that whatever season I'm in, and I still have that, that God gives the desire in your heart, that mm -hmm. is your season. Do the best unto the Lord. But then when the desire disappears and it's not now a struggle and all that, and you just don't not as excited anymore, maybe ask the Lord, is, it, is the season over? Yeah. Now, this is something that I want to share with you about purpose. And this is connected to the law of purpose that we talked about before. The law of purpose. Now, Does someone have that list? You have all these laws. Yeah, I gave them the notes. You have the oh, notes, yeah, guys. Okay. Mm. When you know God's dream for you, right? When you are focused on the dreams and the calling that God has for your life, you can actually use this, the purpose, the dream, right? To what? To disempower and break anything in your life that's not aligned to this dream and this purpose. What do I mean by this? Okay, let's just say you got sick, right? Okay, you got sick and, and probably you are on the edge of dying, as an example, right? But you know God spoke to you. God told you you're going to go to different nations. You're going to speak the word to different nations. You're going to do this, you're going to do that. No, now you can use that purpose that God had revealed to you in your heart to actually break whatever is happening in your life because it's not aligned with your purpose. Yes. So whatever it is that's happening in your life right now, if you have received the promise of abundance and you're seeing lack, you know what, Lord, this is not part of my, of my purpose. It's not part of my calling. Then there, so therefore, this is temporary. So therefore, I break anything that's not aligned with the purpose that I have in my life right now. I reject them and I break them in Jesus' name. You can actually just declare that because again, guys, this is the law of purpose. Anything that goes against that, speak it, enforce it, and it's going to go away. And that's, that's how important knowing your purpose is. So if you don't know the purpose, if you did not hear and did not take the time to listen, 
right? What are you going to say, say to God if something happens like, uh, okay, maybe it's my time. You know, I don't know what I'm gonna, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. So maybe it is my time, and you just accept the moment, the situation, right? But when you take the time to listen and hear, then you will use this to empower and actually disempower the works of the enemy in your life. Okay, let's let's move. I pray the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. That's that's the first part is to know the hope to which he has called you. And the second part is the riches of his glorious inheritance in his people. You know, sometimes we go through these verses like, you know, because we're so familiar with them. But really, if you look at these, even phrase by phrase, right? There's so much meat. There's so much revelation in this. And what does it mean, glorious inheritance in his holy people, the riches? When you talk about the riches, it talks about the abundance, the overflow, right, of his inheritance in your life. When we talk about inheritance, what is inheritance? Money. Oh, I like that. <laughs> ah, mana. You must have a mana. Okay, mana. <laughs> Money, mana. Right? Mana, well, someone has to die. Well, that's, that's a good point. Someone has to die for you to get your inheritance. Did somebody die? Jesus died for you, right? So did you receive your inheritance already? Yes, you did, right? So this is, again, Ephesians 1.3 says, every spiritual blessing has already been given to you. It's already a done deal. So when we talk about this glorious inheritance, in the saints, when we talk about in the saints, it's talking about you and I. In his holy people, that's talking about you and I. God sees you holy. God sees you a saint, right? So that's you. It's already been given to you. What's part of your inheritance? Your healing, your protection, your prosperity, your abundance, right? Your deliverance. Everything. Now, that's your last name. When, when it comes to um, inheritance, I look at it from last name and first name as well. That's your last name, which means these are the things that's already been given to every believer. Protection, healing, inheritance, deliverance, right? Abundance. This has been given to everyone. Now, what's the first name when it comes to inheritance? It's what you need to be able to accomplish the purpose that you have. Now, each one of us is given a different kinds of connections, different skills, different talents, different resources, different connections, right? Because we have different purpose. We have different uh, calling. Whatever God had called you to do, he had already given you the resources that you need to accomplish the purpose. Isn't that good to know? Okay, God, you called me to do this, pero wala ko nito, wala ko nito, wala ko nito. Well, maybe you're looking at it from the physical perspective. But really understanding that this has already been given. Again, it's a past tense. It's something that's already inside of you. You're not begging the Lord to give it to you. You're not looking... Uh, for this from other people, or maybe God will actually use other people to bring this to you, but it's already been given. That's the main point. That's your inheritance. Who is Someone has a question. Oh, someone has a question? Yeah. Go. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Good. No, I have a question. Sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. Because you said that. Okay, it's already mm. Then, if that's the case, that what we need to accomplish our purpose is already there, mm. how come so many people don't have what they need? And how come some people have it quickly and they have it, or sometimes it takes, I don't know, a year, five years, even a decade before the resources come together for your purpose? Is it God's timing? It's your timing. What do you mean by that? There's a lot of times, you know what, guys, in general, because we're talking about revelation, still talking about revelation here, right? Um, the experiences and the things that you have in your life right now are the things that you are ready to receive. 
You know, it's really, it's the different levels of revelation and at the same time, different levels of hearts to receive. That's so a lot of times you don't have because you're not ready to receive that. And that's why it's your timing because you're not ready. Yeah, it's not like God is, is depriving things from you. It's not like God did not give it to you. It's there. It's in the, Ephesians 1, 3 says, it's in the heavenly realms. Now it's for you to take them from the spirit realm down to your physical. And when you're ready, see? When your heart is ready, you will receive it. I think that's the key. A lot of times it's the heart, when your heart is ready. Yeah. Not like I'm ready, like I'm ready, but mm. your heart is ready. The Lord knows your heart's not ready. And you even deep inside you probably know you're not ready. Yeah. You guys okay? Any questions? I, Parang malungkot kayo. I mean, it's like a Zoom call. <laughs> si, si, si Kuya Benji may question. Oh, yes, go ahead. Sure. Ay, hindi kita marinig. Maybe you strive for something, but your heart is not yet ready. You need to get it out there. You may desire for something, but your heart is not ready. That's why it doesn't happen. Yeah. It's again, you may say, I want this, I want that. You know, I have so many things that I want, right? But see, the thing is, are you ready to receive it? That's so true. I, I can see that in my life. There's so many of my desires. And my heart, even self tells me, your heart's not You're ready. You're not ready. It's like self tells me my heart's not ready. <laughs> the Holy Spirit speaks to self to tell me I'm not ready. <laughs> yeah, so that's why, what do we need to do? Then prepare your heart, right? Prepare your heart. Receive more revelations from the Lord. Actually, what we're doing right now, this is part of preparation, right? This is part of, of extending and, and stretching our, our faith. You're going to stand up or you're going to sit down? <laughs> Sometimes. Oh, I'm just going to continue. Are you going to continue? Okay. I'm going to continue. Um, okay, verse 19, it says, And his incomparably great power for us who believe, the power is the same as the mighty strength that he exerted when he raised Jesus Christ from the dead. When he raised Christ from the dead. Okay, again, this is still talking about Paul saying, I hope your, your hearts will be enlightened for you to see. For you to see what? The first one is for you to see the hope for which he has called you. You're calling, right? And, and Apostle Paul is saying as well, for you to see, to see the inheritance that God had already given you, right? That's the second one. And the third one is, he's saying, I hope you see the power, the power, that great power that you have inside of you. And it's that same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, right? This power, it's from this word dunamis. It means power to perform miracles. It means the power in influence, strength, might, ability. In, in, in an amplified version, it says here, the immeasurable, unlimited, and surpassing greatness of his power. Can I just say that again? It's the immeasurable. It's the unlimited, right? And the surpassing greatness of his power, and this is what's important here, in and for us, inside of you. That's the power that you have inside of you. Now listen, if this power, and it's the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, is inside of us, right? And it, it raise Jesus from the dead. So I'm sure it can raise other things in our lives that are dead. It probably can raise your bank accounts, your finances from the dead, right? Raise your health from the dead. Any dying part of your body, relationships that are deteriorating, we're talking about that same power that is inside of you. You don't need to beg God for it. 
You don't need to be looking for it. It's already inside of you. I also is reminded of the power and, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit, right? And I keep on saying this, and I'm going to say this again. This is really the season when you cannot afford not to have the power activated in your life. You cannot afford not to have that healing power activated in your life, or that prophetic power, or that... Uh, the power of the, the gifts of miracles, the gift of faith. I was reminded of, um, and I don't know, I've said this story several times as well, but we had this experience when we went to Boracay, and it was all of us as a family, and we, even with our aunties, so we went to uh, Boracay, and when we landed to Boracay, our dad, actually started bleeding his gums started bleeding and so we went to the hotel there was probably late afternoon right and we we're, we're okay I mean we thought you know what maybe it's gonna stop in, in an hour or so or something like that it wasn't a lot but it wasn't stopping but then um, so we went to our own rooms and stuff and then at night time probably around nine ish right ten ish mom knocked on our door and he said Ano gagawin ko? Si dad nyo, you know, nagbibleed pa rin, you know, like that. So she was really worried. And so we went to the room, and we were like, okay, let's pray, right? Um, but see, the thing is, nighttime, Boracay, you don't have access to doctors, right? At least we didn't know where to go, right? What do we do? We pray. So I remember this. Yeah. Because I went to my dad. Oh, yeah. Commanded the bleeding to stop in Jesus' name. That's it. In yeah. It's like in my mind, it's like I don't know. Because like I'm just, the man of faith, yeah, man right? Of faith, right? I'm at it. Uh, that's what Jesus does, right? Mm. Bleeding stop in the name of Jesus. Mm. In my mind, I'm thinking, oh, right? Right? <laughs> right? But in a matter of minutes, because we were still, I was talking to my mom, and we were talking to my aunt, and all that, and. All of a sudden, the the the, the, bleeding, the stopped. bleeding and no blood anymore. There was no blood. It was just, it was just kept on bleeding, bleeding, and bleeding stuff. And I was just, of course, it's tough. <laughs> yeah, I told my mom. Yeah, See, but because thing, of that, a lot of, times, a lot of times you're confident when it happens, and then yeah, of course I do that. But <laughs> at the time when you say it and you do you do it, I, I somehow it's, somehow it's like yeah, you know, and this is how faith is. I don't know, but but you do it. Because the thing is that I know, and you know what you're supposed to do, yeah. and baka, ay, baka kaya, you know, you talk about faith, and you talk about it, and what if it doesn't happen? Well, that's pride. Because it's not me who's healing. Yeah. You take the risk. I just took the risk, yeah. and because what I know, and what Jesus, what would Jesus do, right? And commanded to stop. Mm -hmm. And actually, our aunt, our aunt oh, yeah. she was there. She received Jesus she that, that Jesus night. Because she night. saw she it. Saw it. She saw because they were in the same room. So Auntie was watching from the very beginning. And she saw the progression. And then he prayed one statement, right? One command. That's the power that we have inside of us. And I was saying, again, this is the season. This is a time when you cannot afford not to have that power inside of you activated in your life. See, it's there. Question is, is it activated? Is it manifesting in your life? That's the question. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. So probably another session talking about the gifts, right? But um, I thought you were going to have like a thing that all we're going to do is spiritual gifts. Something yeah, like one of these days one we're going to days. activate the spiritual gifts. Right, so do you believe that? That the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is inside of you. Do you believe that when you go into a room, life comes? Because you came in? Talaga? I believe you because when you come in, life comes. Wow. <laughs> Boing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you also believe that when you leave a place, you left it increased? 
right? You left it um, higher than how it was when you got there. Because again, that's the power that you have inside of you. The only thing is, again, revelation. Uh, probably it's not the first time you hear about this, but if this is the second, the third, or how many times, you really meditate that in your heart and remind yourself over and over again, right? And just practice it, activate it, have it manifested. Whenever you go, like you come into this place, this place comes alive because of you. Can you say something like that? Yeah. Because it's, I can see it happen over, but I, I, I saw this last time I was, one of the last times I was in the hospital. Mm. You know in the hospital, when a doctor comes in, he brings death. <laughs> the, the prognosis is all about... In general, yes. In general, right? Soy doctora. Soy doctora dito. No, here's here's my point, right? Here's yeah. my point about this, this. Yes, I understand why you have to say all that because you're probably yeah. trained and you didn't, you didn't. But after saying all that, why don't you cancel it? Say, you know what? I know this all says that these are facts, but as a believer, so what? It's just facts. Those are temporary. The truth is, yeah, the you truth are is, you why are. can't we have doctors like that? You know, I would go to Do you know of a doctor like that? Praying medic. Uh, the praying medic. The, the praying medic. medic. The, his oh, books. yeah, his books. Yeah. Right. But actually, here, here, here. In for the Philippines. No, no, no. <laughs> but the thing is, that's what I mean. So I understand that the doctor has responsibility. But as a believer, don't leave it there. <laughs> 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 the report should be two things. One is, I'm going to tell you the facts. And the second part is, I'm going to tell you the truth. Yes. Anyway, don't. That's okay. It. Yeah? No, but that's yeah. you. I don't understand why. Because a lot of doctors are believers, right? And why would they end it there? They shouldn't end it there. These are just facts. Right? No. If, if you take it to the next level, some probably would say these, these are facts, but you know what? We can pray for miracles. We can wait for miracles. No, but what's, what's your answer? No, Doc, my miracle is here and now. I'm not going to ask for it. It's already here. I already have it. So again, you know how you level up to that revelation? It's true. I'm not saying you know what, you, what he said is wrong, but Again, increase that revelation. Do you know that you have enough power in your pinky to destroy a virus? Yep. Do you even believe that? Yep. This COVID-19, whatever, Delta variant, whatever, right? It is under our feet. Yes. That's the kind of power that you have. Now, again, receive a revelation and enforce it in your life. Maybe you've heard it, but maybe you haven't really received that revelation. Then receive it and then enforce it in your life. How do you enforce something in your life? Speak it out. Speak it out, Speak it out right? Okay, um, if you don't have anything to add, I'm going to continue. Yes. I'm going to continue. So verse 20, it says, again, it's a continuation. It says, seated him, talking about Jesus, seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. So God the Father placed Jesus in the heavenly realms, right? On the right side of the Father, right? This is what it says. Now, God the Father had Jesus there in the heavenly realms, in the throne room in the center of power and authority. That's where Jesus is at. Now, Ephesians 2, 6 says, and raised us up together. This is talking about you and I, right? And raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. God, a father, on his right side, Jesus, and on his side, it's you. Can you see that? 
Can you imagine that? Can you see that in, in, in your mind's eye right now? Okay, lang natin i-demonstrate. Hindi na. I demonstrate. <laughs> I don't think we... Do we need to demonstrate? <laughs> okay, you're God the Father. You are in the throne room, right? When you, when you say the throne room again, it's in the center of power and authority in the universe, right? So this is God the Father. Who's Jesus? Ian. Jesus is right next to him. <laughs> Listen, guys. Is this reality now? Is this the truth now? Yes. Where is Jesus? Where is God the Father? In heavenly realms. Seated on a throne, right? Where's the Holy Spirit? Inside of us, here, right? With us, right? Where are you? Here. That's where the confusion comes in. Where are you? There. You're seated here in this Bible study. RV, dito ka. That represents you. But, but then at the same time, you're here. Right. right? Heavenly realms, throne room, physical realm. Both. Both, right? It's, this is not something that's going to happen in the future when you die. This is something that is true here and now, right? That's where you're seated. Again, in the center of power and authority. Okay, guys, thank you, cute nyo. Sige na. <laughs> you, you got the idea, right? Okay. Um, intermission kasi we need to change the battery. You have to make. Are you going to function... Okay, thank you. Are you going to function from your throne in the heavenly realms or from the earth? It's always a moment to moment decision, right? And so, but listen, you have to understand when you choose to function from the heavenly realms, then you get the results of the kingdom. But if you choose to function from the earthly realm, then you get the results of the world. Right? So it's always like, again, it, it's difficult in the beginning when you're learning, and I'm still in the learning process too. We're all learning here, but hopefully as we study this more and more, we get to be more like, you know what, reminding yourself, I'm going to function from the heavenly realms. The reason it's difficult is because what you see with your senses, yeah. what you see with your eyes, what you hear, says otherwise. Yeah. So how do you... And that's why you live by the Spirit and not by the flesh, right? Some here. It's Dawn here. Dawn. Hi, Dawn. <laughs> I want to see. Hi, okay. Sorry. You have your mask on. Hi. You know, first time I haven't met you. Yes. And I was actually chatting with her uh, today. And... It's so interesting. Like sometimes, as as believers, we are we have received Jesus as a Lord and Savior, but then uh, a lot of times we're still very uh, we understand the flesh part, but uh, sometimes the understanding of the spirit realm is is lacking, right? And again, that's one of the main reasons why we started now. Faith is this is really being more aware of the spirit realm and understanding the spirit realm and understanding the kingdom. Because that's where the change is going to come from. If you don't like anything that you see in your physical, change it in the spirit. And then it's going to manifest. Right? So then we're talking about that. Again, you know, father, son, and then you. Have you ever thought, why are you seated there? Have you thought of that? In the center of power and authority. Why are you there, seated on the throne? You are co-heir of the kingdom. What? Kamalito kay Arby. No, seriously. Saldi. <laughs> but really, just think about it. Why are you there? Lord, why am I here, right? Parang, di ba? You are 
you're there on the throne. It's not like you're standing up serving Jesus. You're there seated right next to him. If you imagine a palace, right? I don't know, I just see this in movies and stuff, but you see a kingdom with the king and a queen and the prince and princess, right? They're all seated on a throne. They're, part, they're all part of the family. And that's who you are as well. And, and the main thing that I want to highlight here is God has given you the power and the authority to enforce his kingdom here on earth. Yes. Enforcing his kingdom here on earth. That's why you're there. That's the purpose of you sitting there. Right? Romans 5.17, it says, For if by one man's offense, talking about Adam, reign through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus. Yeah, you know, we fell because of one man, Adam. But because of one man as well, Jesus, right? We reign in life. Revelation 5.10, it says, And have made us kings and priests unto God, and we shall reign on earth. Talking about reigning in life as well. Matthew 16.19, And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. You've heard this so many times. Whatever you bind here on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose here on earth will be loose in heaven. What does that mean? Yung mga alam na. What does this Bible verse mean to you? Like for example, if you accept sickness, that's mm. what you buy him here on earth. Mm. Right. As a, as, a, as, a as a believer, as a believer, it's talking about the keys of the kingdom, right? So when you talk about the keys, it talks about control, it talks about power and authority. Jesus had given you that power and authority to bind and loose, and what Grace said to permit or reject, to allow, to allow, or, allow. or not allow. You have the power. You have the authority to say that. And you know, this word bind in, in this verse, it's from the original Greek word deo. And it means to declare to be illicit or to declare to be forbidden. So how do you bind and loose? By your words and declarations. How do you reign here on earth? By your words and your declarations by your decrees. So you really, if you look at, okay, what is, what's going on with my life? Now ask another question. What are you declaring every single day? What are you speaking of every single day? Are you just declaring the news? Are you like echoing everything that you hear from the news? My bago ng variant daw. Next week or next month, iba you know? like. You're like echoing. We canceled that. Oh, you canceled that in Jesus' name. But see, this is the thing. I mean, it's sometimes you wonder what's going. Why is my life like this? But then look at your declarations every day. And the Bible says that you have the keys. You have the authority to bind and lose. So therefore, you have the choice. And it's again, it's a moment-to-moment -moment choice. Are you gonna come in agreement with? Jesus, who is seated on the throne in the kingdom, or are you going to come in agreement with the world? And how do you come in agreement? By your words again. The words, the words, the words. You know, if that's all you get from tonight, again and again and again, right? It's just zipping your mouth if you don't need to speak. Otherwise, um, if you have something good to say, then speak. Yes, James. Yes. I mean, do we have a 
batteries? Uh, yes, we do. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, I think it's important to understand this in the context of the Greek, because actually what Jesus was saying here is whatever has been bound in heaven shall be bound on the earth. It's like uh, it, we have to understand that there is a binding and a loosening that's already taken place in heaven. And what we're doing is we're manifesting what is in heaven on the earth. If we have that mindset, we'll see binding and loosening. That's all I want yes. to say. Yes, and, and thank you for saying that. Because, see, you look at heaven, and what is allowed in heaven? Is sickness allowed in heaven? No. Oh. And so therefore, you decree it's not allowed here. Is poverty and lack? Is poverty and lack, no. struggle, allowed in heaven? No. 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 So then therefore, it's not permitted here as well. Is strife and relationships permitted in heaven? No. no. Right? And, and that's a very good point. You look at what's not allowed and what's allowed in the heavenly realms and then establish that that's why you are here to enforce again the kingdom of god here on earth right is everybody still okay yes hour and a half stretch break maybe i don't know 10 15 minutes and then i can cut it yeah. yeah. I'm not going to finish, but. Part two will be the power hour. Yeah. Okay, let me continue. Uh, okay. And I, I, I have to say again, because you, um, you have the power to enforce things. The kingdom, right, here on earth. We each, I, I just have to say this, we each has the responsibility. Because you have been given. Right? So then, therefore, you have the responsibility and you have the capacity right, to bring the kingdom of God here on earth, to be the light to the world. Again, it's going back to that. Are you going to leave a place? Pagalis mo, parang malungkot sila lahat kasi na depressed sila sayo. <laughs> like, is, is, that, is that the legacy that you want to you wanna have? Or... Are you going to leave the place and everybody gets excited? Everybody's increased. Everybody's like, wow. They're excited about their future. They have hope. Yeah. You know, and it's your choice. Can I come comment? Yes. You cannot give what you don't have. Now, if you mm. do not have it, then maybe you don't have the capacity to receive what's already yours. Therefore, the key here is increasing your capacity to receive, which is already Again, receiving, right? Which is going to be a power hour topic. Increasing your capacity. Yes. Colossians 1.13 says, He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. I just want to highlight this, point this out, right? Again, this is already a done deal. The word says that He has delivered us. It's a past tense. It's done. He has translated us, transferred us, moved us from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of God. It's done. It's not something that's going to happen in the future when you die. It's, it's really, I don't know how many times you have to explain this, but sometimes we still have that, the thinking that, oh, you know what, everything's going to be better, you know, when I, when I go to heaven. But do you really need all the things that you need now when you go to have anything now? Do you need the abundance? I mean, everything is all set there. When do you need deliverance? When do you need protection? When do you need abundance? When do you need healing? Here. And that, that this is where you need those things. And that's why it's already accomplished and it's already been given to you. See, when you receive a, a full revelation of, of this this reigning in life, right? That you have, people will say, okay, that's blasphemy. You have control over the affairs of your life because you have the keys of the kingdom. And you know what? You have control over the affairs of our nation. Can I just say that? Sometimes we think, oh, 
And you know what? I'm, I'm guilty. Sometimes Saudi and I would say, you know, let's just stay in our own corner and do our own thing and just, you know, work on our business and work on what we're doing, right? But see, here's the thing. We have a responsibility. Because if we have the keys, then we should use these keys to lock and unlock, right? And, and see, we, if we see things around us that is not good, and what do you do? Do you just say, okay, I'm doing my own thing. Or should we use this power that's been already given to us? And I'm not talking about practically in the physical fighting, right? Go to your social media and just start um, posting nasty things against other people. That's not what I'm talking about. I am talking about fighting in the spirit, right? Taking, taking it in the spirit realm as a king next to Jesus in your throne, right? You can command what's supposed to happen in this world, right? Nanda, your solution a lot is take the battle to the spirit realm. I've seen this with a lot of um, members now, friends, who they have challenges with their marriage and advice. Don't worry about that. Take the battle to the spirit realm and then the marriages somehow miraculously, I don't know what happened, it just came together, right? Yeah. Just so many, one after the other. Mm -hmm. Take it to the spirit realm. Because if, uh, if you do it here, where you battle here, there's a demon involved. Yeah. These are evil spirits involved. The battle is in the spirit. Yep. You decide what's permitted and what's not permitted. That's another topic, uh, battle in the spirit. But, but yeah, listen, again, sometimes we, <laughs> this, I, I read this, I study this, and I still fall for anger and stress and just being in this at what's going on around us, right? And I want to create a separate Facebook account. <laughs> and I want to start like posting nasty things from that Facebook account, right? Because that's what Jesus would do. <laughs> but that's doing it in the physical. Oops. That's doing it in the physical. <laughs> our, our battle is not in the physical. Again. So um, should I end it here then? Hang well, on. Just before 8.30. One more verse, one more verse. And then it says here 21. To continue, 21, it says, far above all rule and authority. Talking about what verse is this? Uh, Ephesians 1, verse 21. Far above all rule and authority, power and dominion. This is against Jesus seated on the throne. Far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invo invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. So see, this, this phrase here, above all rule and authority and power and dominion. This is talking about the wicked wickedness of this world. This is used in Ephesians 6.10 as well. Ephesians 6.10 says, actually 6.12 says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers and darkness of this age. So when you see this, and this is talking about the evil that is happening in this world. So the verse is saying that Jesus seated on his throne is far above all of the wickedness in this world, right? Where are you seated again? Right, right next to Jesus in the heavenly realm. So is it also safe to assume that you are far above all of the wickedness here in this world? Yes. Our last uh, spiritual warfare class was about this. Because before, it was, we were battling. Yes. You know, but the revelation, wait a minute, why are we battling? We're far above, and that's where that entire uh, that, that entire series. Uh, of spiritual it's warfare. about being. It's about from a. I would say, from the battlefield to the throne. It's moving from the battlefield to the throne. If you're interested, I've been that, there. And you don't have access to it. Just contact Cell because it's yeah. a separate thing. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it is. It is yeah. spiritual warfare. It's spiritual yeah. warfare. Very good. But, it, but, it's, but it's, it's a different revelation of spiritual warfare because we did, we've done three live spiritual warfare year after year. Every year it's a different revelation. And this last one that was done online, it's actually on Facebook. Separate group. Just contact someone. Not me. And she'll add you to that Facebook group. Yes. But see, if you, again, you are a king seated on a throne. How does a king create a change? Let's just say again, just imagine this for a minute. Let's just say you're in a kingdom, right? Just a hypothetically um, example lang. You're in a kingdom, and then uh, your, one of your servants come to you and say, Oh, King Saudi, <laughs> we ran out of food for the kingdom. What do we do? What do you do? What do we do, King Saudi? <laughs> no, but but are you as a king gonna go, gonna go that go out of your 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 palace and start planting? No. What are you gonna do? Command, delegate, speak, decree, and things happen. That is the same with you and I right now. As a king and queen seated on a throne in the kingdom, far above everything that is happening in this world, far above COVID-19, far above chaos and division and fear and anger and all of these things. Ignorance is so huge right now. Confusion, far above all of these things. See, it's not something about, okay, I've heard of that. But see, the question is, do you really believe that? Do you really believe that? Because if you, then if you do, then enforce it in your life. Sometimes maybe you believe it, but then you are not enforcing it. How do you enforce again? Come on, speak, decree. That's what you do as a king. You reign in life. That's how you reign in your circumstances. That's how you reign in the affairs of your life. That's why, um, that's why it's so important that husband and wife believe the same. Because there are times when I forget because I'm so stuck with everything that's happening. Oh, yeah. And she would, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes she would say it, and I get upset, and I would justify this reality. Yes. But then I, I, after a while, and I, you know, come calm, calm down and ask the Holy Spirit, you know what? She's right. I'm letting what's happening dictate my feelings, emotions, discouragement. That's why it's so important that husband and wife. Vice versa too. In agreement. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When, should when, be in agreement. When she's like that too, mm -hmm. when she's like that too, and I catch it, I would say the exact same thing. And if you're single, it's so important that you have friends who will correct you when you're starting to say things that are agreeing. And so wait a minute, because it will snap you up of that. It's like a trance by the end. A trance. Right? Yeah. Because you're at that moment. It's like a trance. Allow me to end with, with the story. And I heard this story from, I don't know, I forgot. What's but I heard this story. story. True story. This is a story in World, World War II. It's actually in a small island in the Pacific. And it was being uh, ran by the Japanese army. And they had the US Army as prisoners at that time. Again, World War II, right? In this island, they had no communication in and out to and from the place, right? They had no communication whatsoever. And so therefore, when World War II ended and the Americans won, they didn't know about it, right? Um, and one day, a plane flew over the island, right? And then dropped some leaflets. And that leaflets contain, of course, the information that, hey, it's ended and the Americans won. So good, right? So the colonel of the Japanese army 
This mm -hmm. is what he did. He took all the keys. He opened every cell of the prison cell, right? Allowed all the American prisoners out. And then he went to the captain of the American army, gave the keys and said, we are now your prisoners. And then he commanded everyone, all the Japanese army to go in the prison cells and be the prisoners. Now what has changed? Information, revelation, right? Revelation is the key. And see, I really love that this story because, you know what, if, if you really think about it, and I love the honor of the Japanese army, right? Wow, what an honor. Um, I respect that. But see, here's the thing. If you look at it from our own perspective, as long as the enemy knows that you do not know that you have won, as long as the enemy knows that you do not know your inheritance in the kingdom, and as long as the enemy knows that you still think you are a prisoner, you still think you are a slave, you still think you're supposed to experience it, because I've done a lot of things in the past that are not good then you will stay as a prisoner. You will remain in bondage. I hope you understand it. And that's, that's the power of revelation, guys. And I hope our conversation here stepped it up to the next level for you. And if not, if you already have this revelation, I just want to encourage you to maybe start enforcing it more often, right? And see the change in your life. I don't know if anyone is, is okay to do this, and, and maybe if not, it's okay as well. Is there anyone here who wants to kind of share a testimony? I just felt like there's... Is there anyone here who is... Um, because of revelation that they have received, something shifted, something changed in their lives? I know you messaged me personally, but I'm not gonna like force you or push you or drag you here, but... But if no one comes, you will. <laughs> <laughs> but if no one comes, we'll are. drag you. <laughs> Anyone? What yes, yes. Oi! Yay, let's go! <laughs> up here, up here. Mm -hmm. Is it working? But everybody can see you. Can see yes, thank you. You can use mine. No, you can. Use I wasn't planning to share, but my friends back there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, so we were talking about. Uh, you mentioned earlier about COVID, and so I just like to share a story about how the Lord really gave me that miracle of healing from COVID. Uh, so, sometime last week of April, April 23, there was a wedding here, and. The organizers of the wedding require that they should really be tested for COVID. And I tested positive and did the antigen test. And the following day, I was confirmed I tested positive and swap. And so, you know, all those 17, 18 months since uh, COVID began, since the lockdown started, I, I kept on going out. Uh, really doing the ministry and I was speaking in some churches yeah. and I was doing some distributing of food packs to the poor and so when I got that I felt like I was invisible that I would not uh, get the virus and when I got it initially I felt Lord are you punishing me uh, because a lot of people were telling me you should not be doing that you should not be going out I just felt I should really go out. Mm -hmm. And then when I had the disease, I was staying home. Uh, the Lord just uh, impressed in my heart that, no, because that uh, was a little uh, rewind. Before I got the disease, I spoke to our church uh, leadership, and I said, I think we should really be going out. We should not be 
stay home in fear when we should really be uh, stepping into the dark places and bring our light there. Mm -hmm. And after that, that's when I got it. And so I said, Lord, what's happening? Why am I having this? And the Lord uh, just assured me that I'm going to accomplish something in this business in your life. And at the first or second night after I contracted uh, the disease, I, I was inside the house. And I said, Lord, mm, uh, I know that I, sh I have this conviction not to go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And I was, I think, second or third night, my oxygen plunged into a 70 pass. And my friends, my family tell me, it's about time you should go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, and yet the revelation I was getting from the Lord, no, uh, I will heal you. You can stay home. Mm -hmm. And during that time, uh, there were so many voices that were telling me, Benji, it's like uh, very dangerous already for you to stay home. You should get into the hospital. And then a doctor uh, told me, Benji, there's no oxygen tank, there's no, uh, you, there's no one really attending to you, you have no suero, kailangan mo na magpa-hospital. And then the, the voices were mocking me, Benji, mm, uh, why, are you not, why are you taking that medicine? Because ivermectin, I don't want to get into that, but I was taking ivermectin. We take ivermectin. <laughs> and the doctor, was telling me, in so many words, you might die if you don't go to the hospital. And so it's like I began to question what the Lord told me. Uh, Lord, did I hear you right? Am I going to really, uh, and did you really say I should stay home and you will heal me here? And then my wife and I, we were initially fearful and prayed, but as we prayed longer, we there was peace in our heart. No, we will, I will heal you. Stay mm -hmm. here. And so we stayed. Not that we have a million pesos to go to the hospital also. So we, I stayed. And then but with that 70 plus uh, oxygen level, I was also beginning to be fearful. And so Lord, I said, Lord, I need a miracle from you. Yes. I'm going to obey your voice, I'm going, to, I'm going to stay home, but I need a miracle from you. And so that night, I went to bed, uh, and I declared, Lord, in your name, I'm silencing all these voices of fears. I am silencing all these voices of dread, yeah. and I'm just going to listen to you. Yeah. And when I said that, I kid you that I heard this voice from the Lord saying, uh, telling me when I look unto him, I get strength. Mm -hmm. And then I went to bed that night. I said, Lord, mm, I'm at peace, but I'm asking a miracle from you. I better get a 95 oxygen then. Because if this continues, that's the end for me. And so I went to bed that night. And when I woke up in the morning, after I prayed, when I look at my oxygen meter, lo and behold, it's 95. Oh. And since then, to this day, my God's grace has never gone down. So uh, during that two-week uh, ailment, it would go to 99, 98, but never below 95. Mm. And during that time also, uh, it's it's like away from work, away from my uh, away from microphone and support system. Uh, I was mm, like I kid you, I would be dreaming every night. Like it's like I would be spending three hours in prayer and talking to him, and I was enjoying it. Uh, 
sometimes I miss being sick just having that because I got caught by busyness again, but I won't go there. Uh, it's like the Lord was very close to me. I was hearing it. And I was moving into a supernatural territory. So, and my friends, like in those two weeks, almost every day, would be sending me food, uh, flowers, vegetables, and some of my childhood uh, favorite meals without them even knowing it. And I would be eating my meal, I would be crying, and would say, Lord, um, I'm enjoying this friendship with you. Yes, I enjoy the miracle of healing, but beyond the healing, I enjoy the friendship. Mm -hmm. I enjoy the intimacy, I enjoy the closeness. It's like, uh, I remember one lunch that I was eating that came from a friend, and I was crying because I was crying that I enjoyed the meal, I enjoyed the food, but I was crying because Jesus, you're so personal. You knew me so well. I wanted this. And what's making me weep is not that I just got the food, but I was weeping because I knew uh, that my heart was more joyful knowing that my fountain is him and not the food or not what I was getting from him. And to be in that place. Uh, the Lord used my having COVID to be in the place. I don't like the disease, I don't like the virus, but the Lord used that to yeah. really even bring me nearer to Him. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Anyone else? Thank you, ben Benji. That was, that was so good, right? The Lord redeems. Keep mind. In any situation, the Lord redeems. And I like that part. I silence the voices. Do that. If you guys should be doing that every single day. Every day, guys, I silence the voices of the enemy. It's an everyday thing. Anyway, um, anything else you want to share? Otherwise, uh, we're going to continue next time. Dana. Going once. <laughs> Going twice. <laughs> no one. Hero kasing ano. If it's so done yung. Yeah. Si John. Oh, look at it. No, but we, 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 need, we need this. Yes. 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 Oh, yeah. Yes, in with the sweet in line with the in line, in line with, with the COVID, COVID uh, experience. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so, um, ito yung wala pa yung Delta or whatsoever. Pero ito yung kasagsagan ng bago pa lang, bago pa lang yung COVID that time. Mm -hmm. This year ba yun o last year? This year lang yun, di ba? This year lang ba to? Hindi. Last year, last year. Oh, nasa nga lang Oh, nasa Laguna pa kami. So, yung mom and dad ni John nasa uh, Pasi and kami nasa San Pedro, Laguna. Mm -hmm. That time, uh, nasa pa na nalo, na fitness na sila. And... Hindi, add ko pa lang sila. Oh, no? yun. Hindi mo pa lang kasi nalo. <laughs> so, kami, we know, we know the, the identity since we've been uh, listening to uh, the, the videos and that is we know the authority and the power of uh, speaking and our identity through Christ. So we know that already. And uh, matagal namin ina-exercise to sa life namin and we start sharing it to our friends and family, yung close uh, uh, close family namin. Iniumpisa na namin to share. And then, 
Lapit ka dito. Ay, ay, so, then suddenly, na, um, we found out sa group chat ng family na hating gabi, no? Mm-mm. They start feeling the the symptoms of ng COVID. Nung, dito ka mo. Aa. Sabi ng mama, Uy, yung papa mo, nag, ano na, nagbibilin na. Sabi na, nagbibilin. Nagbibilin na siya, parang feeling niya daw, mamamatay na siya. Kaya yeah. nagbibili na siya sa, sa, sa mama ko ng ano, mga gagawin if ever na mamatay siya. Kasi nga, hindi na siya makahinga. So, nang-experience na nila yung di, nauubusan na ng oxygen. Talaga, nigila mm. pa na silang huminga. Talagang yung, yung masakit nila, lamunan nila. Tapos hindi na, na sila makatulog. Tapos talagang sobrang painful siguro nung experience niya. Oh. Pero madaling araw to. Oh, oh. Madaling araw to nangyayari. So, nangyayari. papa muna yung nauna. Papa muna. Oh, oh. Tapos, um... Di nagtawag na mama, sabi niya, pag-pray nga natin ng papa, sabi niya ganun. Kasi parang nagpapanik na silang dalawa, kasi ang papa parang uh, medyo ano kasi siya chubby. So, <laughs> medyo hirap siyang ano, kumilos, parang ganun. Tapos di, sa, di nag-pray na kami, una, di ba, ate, ako, ikaw, tapos kuya ako. Online. Online. So, nag-messenger lang kami. Tapos, Um, nag-pray kaming lahat, di ba, para sa papa. Tapos kinabukasan naman nun, ang mama din, nagkaroon na din siya. So sabi niya, parang hindi na siya, wala na siya panlasa. So lahat daw ng perfume niya, inamoy niya na. Sabi niya, parang wala talagang pangamoy. Tapos pati yung, yung niluto niya, nagluto pa daw siya, tinaray niya kung may lasa. Wala din daw. So lahat na nung ano, signs ng COVID positive, meron sila. At tapos di, uh, sabi na ate sa akin, Jan, sabi niya, kausapin mo nga mama kasi ano, hindi na makabangon. Kas- nakaiga lang daw siya. Sabi ko, sige, tumawag ako sa landline namin. Tapos sabi ko, uh, yung pamangking ko yung nakasagot noon time na yun. Sabi ko, tawagin mo si Lola kasi nasa bed daw. Sabi niya, eh, ayaw bumaba. Sabi niya gano'n. Sabi ko, hindi, tawagin mo. Sabi ko, kasi kailangan siyang pag-pray. Tapos di, kahit nang lalambot si mother, ito baba ako siya. Sabi ko, ma, halika magpapray tayo. Sabi ko sa landline. Di, nag, nag, ano, sabi ko, COVID. Sabi ko ganun. Kausap ko na si, kausap ko na si mama. Tapos sabi ko, COVID. Alam ko naririnig mo ako. Sabi ko ganun. I command you to get out. Right now. Sabi ko ganun. Sa kanya, like, speaking talaga dun sa, ano, sa devil. Oo. Sabi ko, I, I command you to get out. Lumayas ka. Ngayon din, sabi ko gano'n sa kanya. Tapos, uh, in Jesus' name, of course. Tapos di... <laughs> di ba? Just to be clear. Ano yun ang name? Tapos di yun, di sabi niya, sige, sabi niya, salamat. Sabi ko, ama, sabi ko, yung topic natin nun sa Now Faith, COVID yun. Sabi ko, halika i-add kita dun sa Now Faith. Sabi ko, kasi COVID din yung topic namin. Sabi ko niya, oh, sige, sabi ko. Pero sige, kahit sa bed ka na lang ma- makinig, sabi niya. Kasi lambot na lambot daw talaga siya. Tapos, di yun, inad ko siya. And then, tama, yung time na yon yung, yung topic natin, uh, sabi niya, yun yung talagang parang damang-dama niya daw yung healing niya noon. Tapos, mga ilang ilang days pa, pinanghawakan niya talaga yung lesson natin dun sa now faith nung time na yon And then, guling naman sila that week. Di ba? Sabi na mama, kasi sabi niya, yung ano yung boses mo talaga eh, sabi niya, parang ramdam na ramdam ko yung, yung naggaganon daw sa tenga niya. Yung ano, yung pagkautos ko dun sa COVID. Probably, oh. yeah, kasi probably because yung, yung prayer is coming from victory. Means, nato ka sa state na you're praying, not na nagmamakawa ka, mm-hmm. but you're speaking right to the spirit and you're calling out. With authority. With authority. Kasi you know your authority. You're seated nga dito, di ba? Kanina katayo ko dito. Ganon? You it here. So you're commanding <laughs> from that position dun sa enemy. Kasi hindi yun yung plan. Hindi yun yung, hindi yun yung uh, plan ni Lord sa'yo. So you know something is wrong with that and you can command it to hmm. the identity and authority given to you. Jesus hmm. Christ, ayun. So that moment talagang... Eh kasi sickness siya, di ba? Oh. So eh, ano ba gagawin natin sa sickness? Pinapalayas. Yeah. Tama? Kasi hindi siya pwedeng, like, 
Ano, mas marunong ako pa sa akin? Ang ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. ah, may pit! <laughs> Layas! Sabi ko gano'n sa kanya. Umayos ka dyan, ngayon din! Pagbuti na lang, isya lang. Takot niya lang. So yun, yun that moment na yun, uh, may faith ng mga mama at papa, but uh, uh, high revelation through that experience. Uh, uh, tapos sinigundahan pa ng lesson natin sa last faith. Pinasok namin agad yung ill-lesson because of mm. yun yung identity. So abang so, nakahiga man. sila, nakikinig sila dun sa lesson. Mm. Tapos yun dun. Every, nung week na yun, yun talaga yung pinaghangwakan nila. Kasi yes. silang dalawa yung nakikinig eh, silang dalawa yung may sakit. Mm. Tapos din, fast forward, ang papa ko nagpa-check. Kasi parang kukuha siya sa something dun sa... Uh, parang, sa so, permit per- parang permit to travel, parang ganun. Eh, nakita niya, walang nakita niya, walang din niya dun sa parang swab test, oh. tsaka dun sa blood test. Mm. Libre, sa Pasig. Sa Pasig yan, libre <laughs> Tapos ano, pag-test sa kanya ng swab, um, negative. Negative. Pero nakita din yung history. No? Pero yung sa, ano niya, sa, hindi, sa blood, mm-hmm. doon nakita na nag-positive siya sa COVID. Before. Oo, na before, na gumaling daw, sabi ng doktor. And note na, lahat ng nando sa loob ng, ng bahay, nandun yung mga pamangkin na, mm-hmm. nandun yung sister in ko na isa, di ba? Mm-hmm. So, oh, so, pregnant. Oh, Noong time na yun. Pero nung time na yun, pinag pinag pray din natin lahat, di ba? Yeah, lahat. Right? Protection from mm-hmm. everyone, ganyan. So, wala na. Yun. So, na, 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 nalaman na nag-positive ang papa. Tapos, wala lang. So, na-feel nila na pinagaling yeah. talaga sila ni Jesus. And dun sa normal lang yun, di ba? Like, yeah, oo. Oh, oh. That normal. Like, COVID is, you know, wala. So, <laughs> Ayun. So, yun. Yeah. Yes. Gumaling sila. Amen. Amen. Okay, I think we're done. Unless, yeah. Sorry, guys. I wanted those stories to come out. Uh, anyway, um, let me pray, and then we can. You guys who want to stay, stay for fellowship. If you need to leave, um, you guys can go. Anything else I want to add? No. Pero dun dun sa mga stories, guys. I just catch those those learnings. Use your authority to command things. To command situations, to command your circumstances, and see when when she talked to her mom over the phone, she wasn't talking to her mom. She was talking to the virus, right? You can speak to your mountains and command it to leave, right? So apply that. I mean, that's something that you can apply on a daily basis. Um, yeah, let's pray. If you guys can. Okay, I just really want to take this uh, maybe moment to not just pray for ourselves, but really pray for what is going on, right? Um, and if you can speak in tongues, speak in tongues, and just take this and and again, as we were saying, we have the keys to the kingdom of the kingdom, so then we will command things around us. Lord, we praise you and we glorify you. Lord, we just thank you for this moment, Lord God, just gathering us here together with the same hearts, with the same spirit, with the same minds, Lord God. Lord, we just praise you and we glorify you for this moment. We acknowledge you, God, the Holy Spirit, here in our midst. We acknowledge you, Lord God. We acknowledge you, Lord, and we just uh, we acknowledge your truth. We acknowledge your kingdom that is here on earth, your kingdom that is in our lives. Lord, we acknowledge that. And right now, we just want to take the time to enforce this kingdom in our lives, Lord God. So therefore, whatever is not permitted in heaven is not permitted in our lives. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus, any 
sickness, any disease, any weakness of the body, any pain, any discomfort, any imbalance, anything that's not supposed to be there, we command them to die right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we receive your healing right now, not just for us, but for our family members, for our, for our loved ones. Lord, we receive your complete restoration right now in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. We speak to the lack. We speak to poverty. We speak to all these financial issues in our midst. We command them to leave right now in Jesus' name. It is not permitted in heaven, so therefore, it's not permitted in our lives right now in Jesus' name. We command our bank accounts to rise up Rise up in Jesus' name. We command abundance. We command multiplication over, over our finances in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Lord, we lift up to you relationships right now. We lift up to you our, our relationship with our spouse, with our children, relationship with our parents, with our siblings, relationship with friends that are deteriorating right now. Lord, we command them to come alive in Jesus' name. We command restoration to come. Restoration in our relationships come right now. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus, we command every offense to leave. Now in Jesus' name, every anger, every offense, every doubt, every irritation, Lord God. We lift everything up to you and we break them. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus, Lord, thank you for this restoration. Lord, we lift, lift up to you our cities. Lord, we lift up to you our, 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 our subdivisions, our barangays, our, our, our locations, Lord God, wherever we are and our nation, Lord God. We lift them up to you. And Lord, we just speak unity over our country, Lord God. We speak your wisdom to be activated and to fill this nation right now. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus, we speak the fear of the Lord in this nation, Lord. We speak the fear of the Lord in our youth. We speak the fear of the Lord. In each and every one of us, oh Lord God. We speak the fear of the Lord in our children. We speak the fear of the Lord in our future generation, oh Lord God. And Lord, we just, on behalf of our, of our cities, of our country, Lord, we ask for forgiveness. Lord, we stand in the gap as the ones who hold the keys, O oh Lord God, of the kingdom, we stand in the gap right now, and we receive your forgiveness, Lord God, for this nation. Lord, we receive your healing for this nation, O oh Lord God. We receive your restoration for this nation, O oh Lord God. Lord, we just, we just come against any kind of division. We come against any kind of, of a, especially in the church community, Lord, we, we just speak unity over, over the church, over your people, Lord God, that we will see each other heart to heart, no matter what our differences are, no matter what our belief system are when it comes to what's happening around us. Lord, we just speak unity over us, and we speak that each one of us will see the authority and the power that we have inside of us, and that we use this to create change in our lives and in our cities and in our nation, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Lord, thank you for the restoration, and Lord, we are expectant of change to come, of changes to come in our cities, in our nations, of changes to come in our next generation, Lord God. Lord, we see the next generation being called to your kingdom, oh Lord God, and continue what we are starting here right now. And we just speak that over our children, over our generations right now in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. Lord, we praise you. We glorify you, Lord God. Lord, we thank you for what is to come. 
We thank you for what is to come. And Lord, I ask for forgiveness for each one of us as well, for believing the words of the world. For, for sometimes putting that up on the pedestal more than your word for us. Lord, we ask for forgiveness and we receive this forgiveness today. And Lord, I just declare that tonight is, is, an, is, a, is a, a new beginning of, of another level of renewal of our minds, Lord. That we will know who we are in you. That we will know our position in you. That we are seated right next to you, Lord God, in the heavenly realms. That we are here to enforce your kingdom here on earth. Lord, I praise you, Lord, and we, we thank you for this opportunity to serve you. We glorify you, Lord God, and, and we thank you. And this is, this is just the beginning. This won't be our, our last Bible study here. We just declare that we will do this at least once a month. Ministry angels go and just accomplish everything that we have decreed today. We declare this and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey guys, um, if you need specific prayer from, um, from someone, those with a shirt, with a black shirt, uh, and you can tell them the, it says uh, the Hebrews 11.1, 1. that's our prayer team, guys. You can approach them. Ah, stand up nga. Stand up naman kayo with the black shirts. Yeah, that's the team, that's the team. So you can approach them and ask for for prayer if you if you need to be uh, if you need any specific prayer. And other than that, we're done, and you guys can leave. We can fellowship, chit chat, more coffee, more food. Good night, everyone.